Hello, hello, hello everyone and welcome back to Fallout 76. This time on a whole new platform, xCloud. More specifically, on an iPad. That's right, with a new xCloud service which is part of Xbox Game Pass, we can play Fallout 76 along with pretty much everything else on Game Pass from almost any device with a web browser just by going to xbox.com slash play. From there, you can play directly in your browser, or if you're on an iOS device, you can install a bookmark on your home screen that will be a web app that you can just tap on anytime and go in and play. You'll need a uh, an Xbox controller to play the games this way, for most of them at least. There are a handful that have touch controls, but uh, honestly, the touch controls are pretty clunky, so you're going to want to use a controller. So, what are we going to do today? Today, we're going to talk about what works, what doesn't work, and where I think this can go in the future, all from a Fallout 76-centric perspective. Remember, if you like videos like this and you want to see more, do go ahead and subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment. You all know what to do, I'm sure. Let's get into it. Now, I'm going to start with what doesn't work, simply because it's going to be the most glaringly obvious thing when you try it out for yourself. But I don't want you to think this is going to be all bad because it isn't. I'll just cut right to the chase. If you want to actually play Fallout 76 on your mobile device or in your browser, you know, shooting things, doing events, basically anything that involves fast movement or shooting, you should probably just forget about that for now. I've tried it on multiple devices, an iPad Pro, which you're seeing here, an iPhone 11 Pro Max, my M1 MacBook Pro, yes, that's right, it even works on the new M1 Max, and even the browser on my brand new fully loaded RTX 3080 equipped PC. I've tried it on slower Wi-Fi networks, LTE networks, and even my gigabit connection at home. The result has been consistent on all of them. The input lag makes the game basically unplayable. There's essentially what feels like a quarter second lag between hitting a button on the controller and actually seeing your action on the screen. That also translates to when you stop hitting a button, so the tiny little adjustments you make as you move around, they just don't really work. Even a small tap on a thumbstick means you make a big move in the game. You can tell from the footage on the screen that I'm moving slowly, very clumsily, and while I certainly can do some of that on my own in any circumstance, it's far more exaggerated here. What you can't really see, or more accurately, what you can't feel, is how it feels to actually play like this. I basically feel drunk. Like, really, really drunk. After a little while, I can kind of adjust to it, but ultimately not enough to actually get any enjoyable gameplay. That lag also creates some choppy audio issues, along with strange audio artifacts, which you might be able to hear in the background a little bit. It's nothing that's generally too bad, but it's definitely noticeable, especially if you've got headphones on or you're playing through decent quality speakers. In fairness, they do still list xCloud as a beta product, so we know it's a work in progress, but as of now, I wouldn't go into Fallout 76 or any other game that involves fast or fine-tuned movements or shooting, anything where reaction time matters. I wouldn't go into any of those on xCloud expecting a great experience. You should still do it and be sure to provide your feedback when the platform asks for it, and it will. Almost every time you close out of a game, it will ask for your feedback. I do feel like some games are a little better optimized for this new platform, so more feedback from specific games probably means that they're more likely to get fixes earlier than others. So with that out of the way, what else is going on with it? How does it look overall? Those of us who are used to good quality displays, 2K or better resolutions, high frame rates, it's, uh, it's gonna leave a lot to be desired, but it's not game breaking by any means. I can accept that in order to play Fallout 76 on my phone, I'll need to make some sacrifices. I'm okay with that. Visually, I'd say it looks a lot like most YouTube streams. Clear enough to see what's going on, but with enough compression artifacts that you know it's not being played natively. Hopefully, over time they can improve this, but I'd say it's definitely a lower priority problem than the input lag. There's no point in even bothering to fix the visuals if they can't get rid of the input lag. So now that I've spent a bunch of time saying bad things, let's talk about the good stuff. 
What can you do with Fallout 76 on xCloud? Two words, inventory management, and that's a bigger deal than it sounds. I've seen loads of suggestions over the years from people asking for a mobile inventory management app for the game. While that would be great, it's probably not realistic. But with xCloud, at least if you're an Xbox player and Game Pass subscriber, you can jump into the actual game world, manage your stuff, turn in script, move items around, basically all the little irritating things that you just sort of have to do, especially if you run multiple characters. Now you can do all those things on your lunch break at work instead of spending your first 20 minutes of gameplay doing them at home. It's also great for players who are into player vending and trading. Now you can take all the time you want to get your vendors set, adjust prices, or even just hang out in your camp so people can come by and shop. If you're an active trader, xCloud gives you the ability to jump into the game world from anywhere to meet up with someone and make a trade. I'd recommend a little extra caution when doing this, just because the input lag is very real so you want to make sure you're hitting the right buttons, but it'll absolutely work. That's great for player to player trading because it can be so difficult to match up times to meet up with somebody in the game. That makes this so much easier. These are time-consuming activities, ones that aren't necessarily fun on their own, though I suppose they can be, but they're necessary parts of an online game. While the input lag is still irritating when you're doing these things, it's not that big of a deal. You can easily get things done like this and hopefully leave yourself with a little extra time to actually play the game when you get home or when you finally get your turn on your Xbox if you're sharing it with family. I want to end this on a hopeful note. While the current Fallout 76 xCloud experience does leave a lot to be desired, I'm confident that it's going to improve. Microsoft has made it clear that xCloud is essentially the future of Xbox gaming. They want this everywhere. They want it on every browser, they want it on every phone, they want it on every smart TV. They want you to be able to access Game Pass pretty much anywhere you can find a screen. They want Xbox to be like Skyrim. So they've got a lot riding on this. And because it's Microsoft, they've got plenty of money to make sure it gets where it needs to go. They know that this is the key to expanding Game Pass, and I expect that they'll get it right in the future. How far into the future? Well, that remains to be seen. But with the weight they're putting on it, I can't imagine they'll just let it go if they struggle with it for a little while. So for now, Game Pass subscribers basically have a mobile inventory management system for Fallout 76. And hey, that ain't nothing. Hopefully we get a little more than that in the not too distant future. But for now, it's still kind of useful. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm all out of things to say. So that is my impression of Fallout 76 on xCloud. Uh, I do encourage you, if you're an Xbox subscriber, to try it out for yourself. There are still some things I don't know that I haven't had time to do. I want to see what happens if I, uh, if I download Game Pass on PC as well as Xbox. Can it figure out which one it's supposed to use? You know, there's lots of little things to, uh, to kind of sort out going forward. But for now, I think the, the Xbox experience is the core of it. And uh, hopefully this gives you a little bit of an idea what to expect. But even though it's definitely rough around the edges and, well, let's face it, it's, it's rough all around. But uh, even though it's rough all around, I do encourage you, if you're a Game Pass subscriber, to play the game on xCloud for a little bit. Make sure you give your feedback so that uh, Microsoft knows that there are issues and that they can work on polishing them up. So with that, ladies and gentlemen... I bid you adieu. If you enjoyed this and you want to see more, do go ahead and subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, share it with your friends, follow me on Twitter, all the stuff you know what to do. You know how to do all of it. I hope I see you next time, and until then, I'm Fisty McRib.